Hey guys, what's up? This is Swift here and today I'm back with another tutorial and coding video. This time around, I'll be talking a little bit more about Redux and the basics of it uh, and how we can use it in a React uh, development, right? So just a little bit of background about myself before we dive into this. I came to know and properly use uh, Redux just recently, having been a React developer for the past year or two. So before that, I tried to learn about Redux and found that it was simply too confusing. And looking back, I'm not sure why, because Redux is quite straightforward in the sense of the concept and why you should actually use it. So having understood and, uh, the concept and the application of Redux, I'm just doing this whole video series to try to recompose my thoughts and hopefully help those of you out there learn what Redux is and why and how it can help out in your applications and your development process. If you understand React, you should understand how state is used and the entire component lifecycle. So what I have listed here is the few main components that will be triggered uh, once the component has been mounted and that uh, if there is uh, in the event of new props or new state, this whole cycle continues, right? So for those of you who know, let's just do a little uh, recap kind of thing. So whenever you have a new state change, what happens is that this will trigger should component update. It will then trigger this, will update if it's true. If this is true, then it will update. And then finally it will update. The same goes for props, where props will come in here. Uh, we we'll receive props and then it will just go on and so forth. So you have the props and the states, right? So it's quite simple. You should understand that already if you have been developing with React, right? So let's take, for example, a chat application. So this is a very, uh, I'm just using Telegram as an example. Um, so we have, usually we have the uh, conversations at the left and then we have the whole chat window where we expand out the conversation in the in the. Uh, majority of the application and we have messages and so on and so forth. So let's say we store things, if we develop for React, we store all this into the state, right? Whereby we say the state we have things like the messages and we have things such as the message order as well, right? So this will tell us the order of the messages and perhaps things like uh, conversations, right? The different users that we are uh, conversing with. Okay, so imagine that we have a new message that comes in. So we subscribe to some data store, a new message comes in. So what we then do will be something like that, right? This does set state, right? And then we open up and then we change the state of the application. So there are a few things we want to change. Obviously, we change messages in terms where we have already inserted the new message. New message is inside. And then we want to change the order of the conversations. Let's say message order is the order. So for example, this person here has just messaged us. So we need to bring it right in front. So if you imagine message order as if it's like a um, array of different conversation IDs, right? So for example, if Lee is ID3, we want to shift this in front. So message order will now become something like that. Three, one. Three zero one two, right? So we will set that new message order into the state, and what will happen is that at the very end of this, this conversation will then move all the way to the top, right? And the rest will move down, all the way down, right? Each of the conversation will be pushed down. So that is simply how React works, right? And and it becomes very intuitive in this sense. So Redux is basically this whole state thing here. You can see here, Redux is basically a state for your entire application. So we imagine state here in terms of the application uh, or maybe uh, each of the component. Basically, Redux is the entire, the entire application state relies on Redux or Redux store. So we usually call Redux as the universal store or what some people call it, the universal truth of the application. It is the truth in the sense that the way you go about modifying data in the store comes in a manner that when done properly uh, cannot be modified in any other locations except in your actions and reducers. So we'll talk more about that in the next video. So to put it in another sense, right? Redux is basically, if you think about Redux, you can think of Redux as a database storage, right? So you can think this is a Redux and then you have something like your application, right? This is your entire application with all in it. So think of Redux as like a database. But what is so special 
and makes it so beautiful, right? Is that every time your app changes something in the store, it will then automatically reflect these changes to the app back. Because your app has many different components, it will then reflect all these changes here and there. How it does it is that you'll pass in as a prop to the components that are subscribed to the store. So as we mentioned before, we have a prop comes in, this will trigger the entire life cycle all over again. So regardless of where your component resides in, so say we have the app, right? Then we have, we have the conversation list, we have the different conversations, then we have the main chat window, we have the messages, right? So we have the Redux store. So regardless of where uh, your component resides in the application, it can basically subscribe to the Redux store and it will receive information as and when there is a change, be it from here, be it from here, wherever. This change will be reflected over here. So let's take back the example of the messages component, right? So say we subscribe to our main database. We subscribe to our database for, so this is our database for messages, right? So whenever we subscribe it in the whole app itself, right? So uh, if we take a look at this, um, so Telegram itself is an app. Then we have, we break this down into components as we have done previously. So these are the conversation lists. These are conversations. Um, this is the chat window. And these are like messages, right? We'll just put it into this few simple components. So you can see here, conversations are part of the conversation list. Chat window is away and is part of the main application. And the messages are part of um, the chat window itself, right? So let's say we subscribe to messages in the app. Then we pass on. So let's say we have app, right? We have app over here. So we are subscribed to the database for messages. So when new messages comes in, we will then pass it down to the conversation list. So the list, and this will then pass down to the individual conversation themselves, right? Then upon clicking a particular conversation, we say we want to uh, activate um, the app, right? In the sense that we want to show the new conversation into the chat window. So we will pass it back up back up to the app and then this would then basically pass it to the chat window right so you can see here this becomes extremely complicated especially if you have a lot of nested uh, child components you have to pass on um, the props down and down and then if you need to converse back up you have to pass it back up pass functions down so and so forth it becomes extremely complicated it becomes very tedious to code it becomes impossible to read and impossible to maintain and this is a very basic and simplified example of a chat application so think about it if we have a much bigger application how would it then affect your coding right or how is it then you will you be able to understand where data is moving, how data is changing the, the application and so on and so forth. So that's where Redux comes in, right? So we were saying earlier that Redux um, is the universal database. So in terms of the application now, so say we have a Redux store here, same thing. We have the database, our main application subscribes to the database, right? Database has new messages, it comes in here. New changes in messages, it comes in here. The app then goes all the way and push it to the Redux store, right? So we push it in via an action. We'll talk more about action in the next video, right? So this Redux store will then push these changes into the components that are listening to it. So for example, if the conversation list over here is listening to the latest messages. This will automatically pass down as props, the changes in messages. You can then play with it, so on and so forth. And then you can basically have a, um, you can reflect the changes. So we talk about clicking a particular conversation. Same thing, we can pass this down to the store to say that the current conversation that has been clicked is ID3. Let's say this here. 
the chat window is subscribe to the store for the ID. This ID would then be passed on down ID tree to the particular chat conversation. You also can subscribe to the messages and then it can filter to say messages for ID tree, right? Where ID is, ID is something like tree and then it can reflect it over here. So you can see here essentially what happens is that your app will, and it's all the components, will then subscribe and perform the changes that will affect the rest of the application to the Redux store. This becomes extremely streamlined and you can immediately retrieve the data you need as and when you want it. Right. So it becomes very simple in that sense. So I hope that this allows you to understand and conceptualize what Redux is uh, and how it can become very useful and beneficial to your application. So in the next video, I'll dive into some code for a very basic example, say a to-do list and a much more complex example where I show you the code of my recently developed application, which allowed me to understand Redux, right? So we'll use that as a more real life kind of explanation. So if you like this video, do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to me for more of such videos and coding videos. Uh, if not, feel free to ask your questions in the comments below and I'll see you guys again in the next video.